Hello, Larry here from Price It Software. Uh, today, I'm excited to show you one of our latest offerings in our suite of shop management solutions for screen printers and embroiderers. This is Price It Lite. Uh, we also have added Price It Lite Plus and Core 2.0 along with our Enterprise Edition. But for today, I'm going to be showing you Price It Lite and how you can upgrade to Price It Lite Plus if that's something you want. So what we're looking at right now is Price It Lite. Uh, this is pretty much um, all the buttons on the top are the things that you're going to be doing most often. And we're going to go into what those particular, what those specifically do, I should say. And um, this is your status indicator. This tells you sort of at a glance what's going on with this job. And then there's some other information that's right here uh, above that that you're going to need, like deadlines and created on and things like that. So uh, at this point now, um, I'm going to show you uh, something down here at the bottom. So I got a customer info. You'll see a button here that says price it to upgrade light plus or learn more. Um, we'll go over that towards the tail end. But right now, I'm just going to show you what's in Price It Light uh, for $49 a month. And if I bring our part of our website over here for you to look at, uh, this is where you'll see the, uh, if you go to priceitsoftware.com slash pricing or click here, uh, you'll see the different um, features that are available in the different versions that we have. So um, in this case, we're going to go over uh, Price It Light. I'm going to show you uh, how to set it up and uh, what needs to be done. So um, I'm going to assume that you're a new user, that you're a new customer. Uh, at this point, what you'll need to do is um, we're going to go through settings. Now, if it's settings are already done and you've already been using this product for a while and you just want to know how to put it in order, you can skip this next part and skip ahead. You go down to the, the description box and click on that link there and that'll take you to the next section, which is how to put in an order. But before we do that, we're going to go into the settings section and take a look around, okay? So here's Price It Light. We have our logo here, and then we have the shortcuts here. You're going to click on shortcuts, come all the way down to settings. We're going to click here. And this is where uh, different things need to happen uh, when you first sign up with Price It Light. So you want to come in here and you'll want to look at uh, some of these features in here. Uh, these are like default settings and things like that. Like, do you want to lock orders? Um, when you start up, do you want to show jobs not done or all jobs, things like that. Um, what's your processing fee? If you want to start collecting um, processing fee to kind of recoup some of that from your customer in terms of credit card fees, this is where you'd set that right here. And if you're going to apply it, things like that, some, some default settings. Uh, so you need to go through here. And if you have any questions on any of this, just, just give us a call. The number here is 802-257-5188. Uh, and we can answer all these questions. So go through here the best you can, answer these. What you don't know, write it down, give us a call or email us, and we'll go from there. The next thing is the next tab over is new order defaults. And this is where you want to set up uh, the drop down box when you go to do a new order, what that's going to look like. So if you do mostly screen printing, um, then you'll probably want to have this set to default job type of screen printing. Let's say one of your default jobs that you do all the time is, is you know, signs or whatever, embroidery, then you would choose, you would simply choose. Um, choose that as well. So you just choose uh, embroidery as your drop down box. But today we're going to stick with screen printing uh, and then the default pricing grid. Of course, you can have as many pricing grids as you want. Uh, in this case, um, we have um, uh, custom. We're going to use that pricing grid uh, going forward on all customers. And you could do some other things. We'll, we'll look at that later. Uh, the next thing is like reordering rules. When you go to do a reorder, uh, do you want to reroll product cost? I would say yes every time because what if that re what if their order original order was four years ago? We all know price increases have happened. You don't want to be giving them prices from like 2018. You want to be make sure that you get um, you don't leave any money on the table or make or take a loss. So at this point, um, we reload product costs. Yes, that'll reload the product cost uh, coming in from Alpha, SNS, and Sanmar. Do we want to re re uh, recalculate on creation? Yes, we want to recalculate that as well. Uh, do we want to remove screen fees? Usually you do want to reorder. So I would say no, keep notes, yes. Keep art status from original. Um, that's up to you, yes or no. If you say yes, then that means you do not have to go through uh, that whole uh, approval art process again. Um, typically, we'll leave that no because we want to, even on a reorder, make sure that this is the order we're talking about. This is the artwork we're talking about. This is the one you're approving and we're getting a signature or um, things like that on. So if you're a user of Price It Light Plus, um, and uh, you can keep that art status the same and you won't have to do the proofing again. But uh, back to Price It Light, um, we're gonna go back here to product defaults now. This is um, vendors with an X will not be included when creating purchasing reports. So you may have like um, uh, uh, a vendor that's a house vendor or, or a customer, or customer supplied, 
you don't want those to show up on your garment purchasing report. That way you don't accidentally order more garments than you need because you already have them. So you would check off those to make sure that um, anything ordered with that uh, vendor ID or vendor uh, name is not included with the um, garment purchasing report. Then you'll want to come down here and like new product defaults, like what is the markup going to be on new products? And uh, this is where you'd set that up as well. Um, shipping charge, things like that. Typically, most folks are doing between 33 and 50% markup with anywhere from zero to 75 cents shipping charge. That's standard. Of course, you could set it up however you want to do that. And we'll get over that in just a moment, uh, a few moments here of where you would change that. Um, and some of the questions you would answer here. Invoicing payment gateway, uh, you'll want to create a header that's 7.5 inches uh, by 1.4 inches and looks something like this. Really, the design is up to you. But once you've done that, you can cer certainly just copy and paste that in here or save that document, whether you're working from Corel or Fireworks or Photoshop, and you want to right click in here and go insert picture. Uh, and then you just pick wh whatever um, uh, header that is, and it'll put it in here for you. Um, there's another thing you want to look at on this section as well, and that's this is the text that appears at the bottom of each invoice. I like to blow it up so I can look at it a little easier, but um, you can come in here and um, make sure that this says everything you want. Of course, this one says perfect image. You want to make sure that it says the name of your company and any information you want to add or take away from it. Uh, the other thing is um, we want to set the payment due date should be linked to like the creation date or do we want to link it to completed on date? That's the choice you can make there as well. Again, if you don't know, just write it down or ask, give us a call and ask questions um, and uh, we'll be certainly can point you in the right direction. Um, uh, show invoice messages. Uh, yes, invoice to show line totals or stare. You want your invoice to show just style numbers, generic invoice, whatever. This is where you set up the type of invoice that's going to be sent to your customer by default. Of course, you could change that anytime you want, and we'll get into that in just a moment. <clears throat> Auto apply artwork to the in, uh, invoice. Uh, if you want to always apply uh, artwork, uh, no matter what, you would say yes. If no, then it, you'd have to actually type that information in yourself to get it to show up uh, and the invoice. The next thing we're looking at here is the next tab over here, job types. Uh, this is really important to go through because um, there may be items here that come out of the box with price at light that you don't do. Like you may not do um, samples. You may not do vinyl. What you'll want to do is come over here and delete those to get them out of there. And that way they do not appear in the drop down box when you're going to set up a new job or estimate. Um, this is also where you would choose the pricing grid you're going to use for that particular type of job, the pricing method. And then if you have any add on labels or add on charges, and then whether you do like some people, they always contract out their embroidery. So if I choose embroidery on this edition of price at light, I can see right here, as soon as I choose embroidery, that's going to choose this pricing grid. It's going to choose this pricing method, but it's also going to create a, um, a contract uh, contracted out work order or contracted work order. Uh, so, all right. So we're going to move on from here. Once you've done all that, um, you can also come down here and make sure uh, that this information here is correct that appears at the bottom of your invoice. I'm going to click on emailing now. This is where the email templates are, boilerplates that you would use, making sure that this is correct. Usually out of the box, we have this information correct according to what we've received from you. If not, you can change that here to whatever you want it to be. You can also change the content. And um, one of the things you want to keep in mind is always leave these tags. That way, when you send out an estimate, it won't say just hi. It'll say hi, Joe, or hi, Jim, or hi, Sally, or whatever, um, to personalize those messages going out. Um, invoices here, again, we have this more section here. This is for invoices from order entry. You'll just want to go through here and make sure that these are all correct and that they are the way you want them to be. Um, and there's some other questions in here, like um, whenever a customer, um, of course, if you're a price at light plus, you have the proofing section. Um, and with that, uh, you would have to know where your notifications are going to uh, when a customer interacts with it. So we're back to, uh, let's go back to light, price at light again uh, only. So this is what we're dealing with here. Uh, value lists, this would be where you'd put things in like your designers, um, locations, you may have location that's not here, or maybe you don't do some of these locations. Um, this is where you would set all of those values, including like direct to garment, DTF sizes, your employee names, things like that. Um, address and shipping, just make sure this is correct. Um, we do have Shippo for use with price at light. 
Um, and if you wanted to use like UPS, certainly you can still use UPS like you always have through their uh, website. Uh, but if you want to have access to things like a DHL, um, FedEx, uh, post office, all those other carriers, simply subscribe to Shippo. I think they get a nickel for their trouble and you get awesome rates because they, um, uh, they do a lot of shipping. You're working under their label, not your own. So uh, that works out fantastically. You save a lot of money. It's integrated with Priceit uh, to make it a lot easier for you. And that's a great feature to have um, in, a, in a version of Priceit like this. So um, I'm going to go back to the redirect now. This is the redirect. Again, you'll want to make sure that you have, um, you'll have this in here. So this doesn't really apply to light, um, to light users, but this would be for light plus if you're getting the benefit of getting an estimate approved into, uh, into a job, uh, you would be able to um, um, uh, send out a link and get it approved. And one of the things that the branding that they're gonna see is this. So this really doesn't apply for light, but it does for light plus. It's something to think about on down the road if you ever do upgrade. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna pull this view back a little bit, zoom out a little bit. Um, let me go back a little bit further. So if I come down here, um, you know, we talked about what's the difference between light and light plus. Um, we can go over those um, right now if you'd like, um, or actually I'm just gonna move forward and show you how to put in an order. And at the end of this, we'll talk about what other features are available. So at this point, um, we're gonna go ahead and put in a new order. Uh, I'm gonna click this link right here um, and we're gonna go through these items one at a time. So I'm gonna click on new order. And we have a screen print uh, job. Let's do an estimate. Let's do it in-house. This is that drop-down box I was telling you about for type of order default. So I'm going to click on screen print, in-house estimate. Uh, let's create the estimate. First thing I want to do is come down here and put who we're doing it for. I always like to follow the who, what, when, where, why. So who are we doing this for? Let's do this for JB Auto Body. Let's pick this customer here. What are we printing on? Let's pick a 3600 from next level. Uh, we'll go darks, we'll go black, and we will go ahead and put in our quantities. One thing to note is that if you want all your quantity, all of your, um, this line to have the same price for all sizes, you would simply keep going like this. And the price that it would show here would be just an average price spread out among all the sizes, different sizes. Now, maybe you have a customer that wants to know how much the 2X, 3X, and 4X cost. Uh, so you don't have that. You want to have those as separate line items. It's pretty simple. I would come down here and click on this and click on copy from above. I'm going to go partial because I don't want my quantities. I'm going to do it one more time just so I have that information ready, partial and partial. And I'm going to go with 12 on the 2X and 12 on the 3X. All right. So we know what we're doing it on um, this product. Now we're going to come down to pricing and I'm going to say we're going to do like a three color job. I'm going to click in right here. I'm going to click on calculate order. And just like that, I could tell that customer it's 1353 or whatever the cost is. Uh, I can email this to the customer um, and send it out. So I click in here, uh, I can click in view estimate, and then um, I can print this, right? Um, or I could email it out. If I click on email, I'm just going to click on send through desktop app. Um, there's a couple of other things now that we're talking about emailing. I'm going to kind of break away from this just for a moment. Um, if you are a new user, one of the things you're gonna need to do is come in here and set up your, um, your users. So users are defined as um, people who have access to price it. Uh, the connections are what, how, how many con uh, concurrent or simultaneous connections that you are allowed. So with price it light, you're allowed one connection. Um, you can have as many users as you want. You can create up to 10 people who quote unquote have a profile or access to price it, uh, but only one at a time will be able to get, get on. Now, if you need more than one person to get on at a time, you need to subscribe to additional users or user connections. And um, if you have two, then that means two at a time can get on, three, that means three at a time can get on, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I'm gonna show you really quickly now. I'm gonna kind of stop for a moment. We're gonna set up, uh, come in here and go to, um, jump to support tables, and then we're gonna to go to users. And in users, uh, you can kind of scroll between all the different ones with these, uh, with these arrows here. Uh, we can come through here and just kind of look at them all. Uh, in this case, I wanna add a new user, so I can add as many as I want. I would just say new user. Uh, I would just say uh, new user two, because I already have a user one. 
one, two, three, four. And you can call it whatever you want. Jim, Joe, Jane, whatever. Um, front desk, art, whatever. So I'm going to create a new user with a password. We're going to say, okay. Um, at this point now, I need to determine what department are the in. Admin sees everything. These other three views are redacted. So sales, art, and shipping will be redacted. Um, and you can actually, if it's an artist, you can just choose art and then activate that account. And they have access to all the tools that they need to work within price it. Well, in this case, I'm going to leave it as admin. Let's just do that. We're going to activate that account. Um, and now I want to tell that, that user that this is their username and then click here to get the password to get their password. Okay. So the other thing is once you have a user in here, you need to click over to the email tab for this user and you need to determine what type of email option they're going to be using. If it's a desktop app, you just simply leave it here and you select Outlook or other. If it's not Outlook, it would be one of the other ones. And then what'll happen is Pricey will interface or interact with uh, your desktop app, whether it's Outlook or um, any other ones that are out there from Mozilla um, <clears throat> and connect and integrate with them. Uh, if you're using these other options, Gmail down through Gmail, uh, these are all web-based and you just simply you know, choose the one you have, fill out this information, send a test email. If you have any trouble with any of, any of this, like you're sending out test email, it's just not working, especially with Gmail. Um, in our area of the user group, uh, not user group, but the members area at, on our website, pricesoftware.com slash members area, the password is help, all lowercase H-E-L-P. In there, there's a, a way on how to set it up uh, so that Gmail works with the two-factor authentication and the app password. And if you just don't have time for that business and you just need it fixed quick, just give us a call, 802-257-5188. I've done it a bunch of times and I can do it really quickly for you and save you some time. Um, so at that rate, you know, let's assume we've already set this up the way we want it. Uh, our desktop app is ready to go. At this point, I could email this estimate out, click on here, uh, click on email, and then send through either desktop app or whatever I've chosen for my email option. And then the customer will get a copy of this as well. So that's how we would send that out. Um, the next thing I want to talk about real quick is how, really quickly how to put artwork in, because maybe you want to do that before you send out um, send out the estimate so you have some kind of artwork involved. So what I'll do is I'll come in here, I'll set up my deadline. I'll say, you know, usually two or three weeks out, depending on what your shop is. I'll schedule that for maybe the week before. Um, I'll put a reference in here. I may say the reference might be, this is a, um, you know, maybe it's an uh, art number, uh, art number one, one, two, three, four, or maybe soccer ball or whatever it is you want to put for a reference, something that's searchable, that'll be easy to find this job or that artwork in the future. So I'm going to put in here, also my, cus uh, my customer PO number and call it good there. That's gonna go out. Um, and so now we're ready to move on to the artwork section of the program. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna click on here. I'm gonna click on get art. And um, I have an image in here from before I just threw in here, but you know, basically to add an image to here, all you have to do is right click in here, insert picture from a file, a folder, um, and just choose any picture you want. It'll upload that foil right here, there you go. Then you put in your ink colors. Um, you can also just copy and paste from, from your application, whether it's um, um, you know Corel or Fireworks or Photoshop, you can just copy and paste that information in here. And then if you know your ink colors, you can add that. If you've done this job and you know your mesh counts, you can put that in here as well. And that will permanently store that, uh, making it easier for you to do a reorder later and less, less hunting around for the information. So let's go with what we have here. I'm gonna select this as the artwork. Again, it's just a random piece of artwork. Uh, I'm just gonna click, click in here 10 inches. Now, one of the things I wanted to say too, is that um, the artwork, you can do images, just the artwork. You can do a mock-up. You could do up, some of you have some really awesome, slick looking um, um, things that um, you have that are in there that'll show the customer like everything from the size, where it's located, any marketing efforts are also there. And you can also add those here as well. So we went ahead and we went ahead and got the art. We set it up, we selected it. Um, I'm just going to put, you know, center front on here for a note as well in, in uh, whatever ink, you know, ink and whatever the ink we're going to be using, um, center front. And then um, from here, I'm just going to, um, we can go to, we go to the work orders and look at that. So if I go over here to screen print work orders, we could see that this image should now appear in the artworks thing. And I can select the exact location, center front, and I can print this also and hand it off to whoever's in production and they'll have that information. So if I click in here, print, uh, I could print this off and they're gonna get a copy that looks uh, just like this. It's gonna look like this with the artwork and ink colors and if there's mesh counts, things like that.
and you would hand that off to whoever's doing the production. All right, so <clears throat> if I come over here as well, um, I can see there's a couple other things that need to be done. Um, but before I do that, I wanna show you the uh, embroidery artwork section. It's just like we looked at just a second ago with this screen print artwork, the embroidery art section is identical with the exception of it has a built-in colorway and you could choose you know, what your thread manufacturer is. And if you don't see your thread manufacturer in this list right now, fire off an email to us, let us know what your manufacturer is. Chances are we have that database and we can upload that for you as well. So uh, we would choose our thread manufacturer and then we would just simply either choose by thread number or we would just come through here and scroll through and hunt and peck. And then these items will eventually make their way over to the work order if this were an embroidery work order. So um, that's that section. Um, history tab right here. Uh, history tab will show you pretty much any job that's in the system and you'll be able to drill down by anything from, you know, orders completed to what's been shipped, things like that. Um, job type, um, you can drill down by that, by sales rep, really get a really comprehensive report and get all the information that you really need. All right, so um, with reporting being said, we do have some reports in uh, here with Price at Light. We have uh, some other uh, reports that you can look at right here. All right. Um, so one of the next things we need to do is need to order garments. So as a Price at Light customer, one of the other advantages that you have is a garment purchasing report. Um, so if I click into here, uh, I can click in and go, you know, ordered. I can click in here and get here, or I can go to, under shortcuts, garment purchasing. It takes us to the same place. And from here, I create a report. And what it does is it goes through the system. It finds all the open orders and what needs to be ordered. In this case, we have one item on our list. Uh, I would simply open up Alpha's website. If I have a dual monitor set up, I click here, copy that to my clipboard, use that information at the, at the Alpha website to complete my order. Uh, some folks like to print this list and then just use a paper and pen and check it off as you go. That works too, whatever, whatever works for y'all. So. In this case, um, we've chosen this one and uh, we're gonna check it off as we're done, yes. And then we're just gonna move on. Now, as we continue on, um, the next thing that can get printed is a breakdown report. And this would have all the customers and the things that we ordered for all the customers. This is great for receiving to have sitting back by wherever the stuff gets counted in. And that way they know when they're counting this stuff in, what job does it go to? And they can eventually come in here and then mark stuff as being ordered or whatnot. So. Uh, I'm going to come over here to this latest job we were doing. I'm going to say copy to ordered and maybe copy to received. And we go back to the front. You know, now stuff has been ordered and we assume it's been received. We now have these green arrows that are telling us everything's ready to rock. This N and N right here, that's names and numbers. So if you have like a team or something where there's, you know, coach sends you a list, this is where you'd put that information in here. And that information will also make its way to the work order as part of the work order. Uh, a couple of other things of note here are that you do have um, you are able to take payments uh, through Price at Light. You'd have to um, um, get it set up with your payment gateway and things like that. Um, so that's, uh, that's pretty much uh, Price at Light. I mean, there's some other things in here, but that's basically will get you uh, going in any shop environment. And um, you know, once a customer calls you and says, hey, it's a job, you can convert that thing into a job. And once you've done that, then... Um, what will happen is um, all the rest of the wheels start moving in this, and that includes creating the work order behind the scenes. It also uh, gets um, um, your, if you have a names and number list, it'll create that as well. And that'll be part of when you print off your, your uh, if I come in here and I say, you know, like a screen print work order, if there was any names and numbers, uh, I would also print that off as well. All right. So one of the things that uh, folks ask is what's the difference between price at light and price at light plus? Um, Price It Light Plus has the following, uh, QuickBooks integration. It also has art proofing, which is really cool. Um, multiple art options proofing. That's an options proofing section where a customer can choose what artwork they like and what, which one they don't. Um, we also include SMS texting uh, integration, uh, which if you do that um, through Price It Light Plus, it's a buck something a month for the texting and it's like... Uh, seven and a half cents per message going out or something like that. Less than a penny a message going out. Um, and uh, that feature is activated with Price It Light Plus. Uh, we also have interactive estimate approval. So you can have your customers approving your estimates um, instead of you having to do it every time. Um, they would approve and at that point they could 
uh, you can start taking on um, payments, um, and deposits and things like that. Okay, so, um, you know, with all that being said, and uh, looking at what we have available, um, if you want to upgrade to Price It Light Plus, it's pretty straightforward. Um, all you have to do is click on where it says customer info right here. And you'll see this button that says upgrade to Price It Light Plus. Um, if I click here, this just says um, upgrading will add $50 to your monthly bill and a one-time $300 setup fee. Um, so if you say, yes, upgrade me now, what we're going to do is um, if I, watch what happens. If I click this, whoops, upgrading price level at $50 to your monthly bill and 59. Yes, we're going to say yes. And now um, you're going to get an email from us and we'll just take the, care of the billing. Now you have Price It Light Plus, which also includes the QuickBooks integration. All right. So, um, and those are some other things we can get to later for another day on another video. You could check the description for the link to the video for Price It Light Plus. Uh, and I'll go over some of the same things we did in this version. So, without further ado, I want to thank you again for coming on board with us. Uh, some resources for you are the Price It Software Users Group. In fact, if I come down here to support and click right here, you can go to the, the Users Group on, on Facebook, join that group. There's a bunch of folks there. Um, just like you who are using Price It, and it's a great resource for after hours or maybe times when uh, we're not available. You can always post there, and either one of us, if we're available, will answer it, or one of our customers will. But at any rate, it puts you on our radar, lets us know that you need help. Um, there's also a quick start video here. You can click on to learn a little bit more about it. We also have a uh, members area of our website. If you go to priceitsoftware.com, and uh, if I pull this page over here real quick, uh, we'll be able to see that. So if I go to priceitsoftware.com and, <clears throat> excuse me, we click under the support area uh, once we get there. So once we get here, uh, all we want to do is mouse over the uh, support right here and we can go down to the members area. And in the members area is password protected and that password is simply H-E-L-P, all lowercase, H-E-L-P. You get in here and there are videos and tutorials on how to do different things uh, in Price It. Now, you may look at it and it may be like Price It 9.8 or Core or something, but a lot of the functionality is going to be the same. Uh, and this is where you would get resources for not only Price It Lite, uh, but also Lite Plus, Core 2.0, and our enterprise edition of uh, Price It software. And uh, this is your um, members area right here where there's different videos, tutorials, webinar series, different fixes, things like that. Um, but again, you can reach out to us, uh, info at priceitsoftware.com. Um, that's again, info at priceitsoftware.com, or you can call us 802-257-5188. All right, uh, look forward to serving you guys. My name's Larry, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day, and thanks again.